In this video, we will show you how to replace your left front axle stub shaft on this 2009 Dodge Dakota. This will be located directly behind your left front wheel. Let's get into it. The first thing you need to do is safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so your wheel's off the ground. Once you've done that, continue on to removing all five of your 22 millimeter lug nuts and then the wheel. If you have a dust cover, remove that as well. Next, we're going to move along to removing the caliper from this area. But when we do, it's important to make sure that you have something holding the rotor in place. I'll continue on with a spacer and one of my lug nuts to hold the rotor to the wheel bearing. Now we can start removing the caliper. You'll notice for this, you have two 21 millimeter bolts holding it in place. We'll loosen the top one, leave it in there a couple threads, fully remove the lower one. Inspect all of your hardware as you remove it, replace it as necessary. Now we'll start removing the caliper. When you do, it's important to make sure that you hang it on something so it's putting no pressure on the flex hose. Before we hang it, let's just take a quick peek at those pads. Make sure it looks like they're not worn or damaged in any way. If they are, it's a good idea to go ahead and replace them. Now I'll hang this aside so we can continue. Continue on to your 36 millimeter axle nut. Use a hammer and punch to break the axle free from the wheel bearing. Now that we have the wheel out of the way, let's go ahead and follow our ABS wire coming up the control arm and then all the way up to the wheel well. You can see that you have the tip of the push clip coming through. Use a trim tool and come from the back side of the wheel well here and pry up against the ABS wire. We're gonna try to pull this right out of here. Once you have that down, you can bring it down to an area that you can service this. Looking at this area, you can tell that there's a little tab that we can squeeze in and then gently pull this apart. Once we do, we'll give it a quick check for corrosion. This one looks fine. Let's follow the wire down to the upper control arm. To remove this from its locking clip, we'll use a small pocket screwdriver. Come right in between this clip and gently pry this to separate it. Once you have that up, continue on to removing the ABS wire from the clip itself. We'll give that a quick inspection. Now we'll bring this down over to this side. Now let's move along to the upper ball joint nut. In our instance, we have a locking cotter pin and a castle nut. Let's remove that cotter pin and then remove the nut. Use a 21 millimeter socket to remove the mounting nut. We'll leave this on here a couple threads. Now we're going to have to separate the ball joint from the steering knuckle. When you do this, you don't want to use a pickle fork and come in between this area and potentially damage the ball joint or the boot itself. We'll use a little bit of vibration with a hammer to break it free.
use a pry bar, come under here, pry down on that upper control arm, remove the nut, and then slowly release the upper control arm. Now we can start removing the left front axle from the stub shaft located in the front differential. Go ahead and use a hammer. We're gonna tap on the axle, try forcing it away from the vehicle itself. Now we can take hold of the axle. We're gonna carefully start pulling it away from the steering knuckle and wheel bearing, and as we do, we'll bring it out from under the vehicle. With the axle out of there, let's continue on to having a look at the stub shaft. You'll find that you have a rubber washer on this. It's a seal. We can go ahead and have a look at that and set it aside. Now we can start removing the stub shaft from the front differential. There's several ways of doing this. We're going to use a pry bar and carefully get into the groove where the snap ring is supposed to be. Once we've made our way in there, we'll try pressing this out of the vehicle with our hammer. There it is, friends. Now that the stub shaft is out of the differential, it's important to make sure you clean and inspect the seal. If it doesn't look like it's in good condition, go ahead and replace it. Just wipe this down. Make sure it's still soft and pliable. It's not torn or worn, damaged in any way. Now we can get ready for the installation of our brand new stub shaft. For the stub shaft itself, you'll find that you have one area with splines that are longer than the other. We want to put the long side into the differential. Go ahead and give this a little twist, lining up the splines with the inside of the differential. Next, you're going to continue on with a rubber mallet. We'll give this a couple loving bonks to drive it all the way into the front differential. Once you feel as though you have it in there, go ahead and grab onto it and try to pull it out as hard as you can. You should have a little bit of movement, but it should not slide all the way out. This feels great. Let's continue. All right, friends, let's get ready to install our axle. Pay attention to the area that goes onto the front differential stub shaft. It's a good idea to use a little bit of copper never sees in this area. Now we can move along to using some copper never sees inside of the splined area of the bearing. Now we can take the axle from underneath the lower control arm and start putting it in and through the knuckle and the bearing. Let's start installing that axle. We'll come in up above the control arm and start putting it in towards the back side of the wheel bearing. Once you have that slid in, we can align this area with the stub shaft. Now we can get this aligned. We'll start bringing up the control arm here and the knuckle and pressing that axle into place on the stub shaft. Once you have it in place, grab onto that inside area of the axle and try to pull it off. You wanna make sure it's locked into the stub shaft as it should be. Continue on to reattaching your upper ball joint to the knuckle. Let's get this aligned. Swing the control arm down so we can start in the upper ball joint nut. Let's move along to the upper ball joint nut. We'll use a 21 millimeter socket for this. Snug it and torque it to 70 foot pounds. Once you have it torqued, you wanna to pay attention to the slot on the nut. Make sure it aligns with the hole in the ball joint. If it doesn't, continue tightening that nut until the very next slot does. Take that cotter pin, slide it through, peen it over.
Let's move along to the brake caliper. We'll slide it in position over the rotor, align our two mounting bolt holes, and start in each of those 21 millimeter headed bolts. Now we can snug them up and torque them to 130 foot-pounds. Now we can make our way to the ABS wire. Press that in, listen for a click, make sure it's secured together. Now we'll continue by pressing this through the fender well from the backside out through the forward area. We can take this and put it in position. Press that down, make sure it's secure. Now it's time to reinstall the axle nut. You'll notice that I'm a lot closer to the ground for this, because as we start to tighten this, you'll find that this wants to spin on you. The reason why we're close to the ground is because you can use a long pry bar, carefully get in between your studs, making sure that you're not going to damage them anyway, and that'll hold this still while you continue. We'll put on the axle nut, start it on there by hand and snug it up. Once you have it snugged by hand, go ahead and torque it to 185 foot pounds. Let's remove the lug nut and the spacer from this area. Let's get our wheel on here. Start on all five of your 22 millimeter lug nuts, bottom them out. Once you have those snug, get the wheel safely back down on the ground. We'll continue on to torquing each of the lug nuts to 140 foot-pounds. Torqued. Okay friends, we've got the truck back together. At this point, go ahead and hop inside the passenger compartment. Pump up the brake pedal till it's nice and firm. Take your vehicle for a road test. Make sure you don't have an ABS light and no funny noises. After that, go ahead and get yourself safely down to your local alignment shop. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.